pets are members of the family too, 100%. We choose only the best for them, from food and clothing to haircuts and hotels. These adorable little companions make our life kinder and brighter, and their loss can be a great grief and tragedy. But you can express your love even after they're gone. Make your pet's last journey unforgettable. Send their ashes into space. Although this is not an advertisement for Celeste's pets, it could be. This organization does offer space services of such a nature. Initially, the option was only available to people, but the company then received numerous applications asking to include pets in memorial space flights. You asked, they delivered. There are several ceremony options to choose from. A small part of the pet's ashes can be sent to the edge of space and returned back. You can launch it together with a satellite into Earth orbit. As the craft returns, the ash capsule will erupt into the atmosphere like a shooting star. The primary option is to send the ashes to the moon or into outer space. Naturally, the prices for such services are also cosmic. But what about those animals that journeyed outside of Earth while still, well, all in one piece? As a matter of fact, they've gone into space much earlier than people. First, the United States launched fruit flies. They always seem to get it first. American flies traveled aboard a captured German V-2 rocket in 1947. Two years later, they did the same with the first mammal. This was a rhesus monkey with the pretentious nickname of Albert II. But both of these flights were suborbital. The launches were at a mere 68 miles above sea level, with the monkey being launched at 83. The dog Leica went down in history as the first animal to orbit. It was launched there by the Soviet Union in 1957. The dog itself would probably prefer to remain unknown. After all, the animal died of heat exhaustion just a few hours after the launch of the rocket. Still, after three years, the Soviets got their act together and sent two dogs out and then back to Earth alive. The stars of the Sputnik 5 space program were Belka and Strelka. Neither the Soviet Union nor the United States of America lagged behind in the space race. On January 31, 1961, they sent a trained chimpanzee named Ham into space. Ham became the first animal to interact with a spacecraft, as opposed to just sitting in a cage. In addition to this, rabbits, rats, mice, guinea pigs, hamsters, quails, turtles, newts, geckos, frogs, snails, and even fish were all sent into space at different times. And this isn't even a complete list. But what about cats in space? Approximately 600 people have traveled outside the Earth. There were probably more animals, especially if you count each fly separately. But there was only ever one cat among them. And this event is not one from the Soviet Union, nor from the American side of things. This astronaut cat was an achievement of the space program in France. The possible impact of space on humans was studied by France's Centre Enseignement and des Recherches de Médecine Aeronautique, the Center for Education and Research in Aviation Medicine. Granted, for this, they only had rats that had been in suborbital flight. Launching rodents into space in France began in the early 1960s. But very soon, these experiments no longer provided the necessary data. Bigger animal astronauts were needed. So in 1963, the center acquired 14 cats. Why did the French choose specifically these animals? Most likely to avoid any repetitive tasks. And also because the cat's brains had already been studied to an extensive degree. It makes no sense to send into space creatures that are not well understood even on Earth. Candidates for the flight underwent serious testing and research. You can't just fly into space even if you're a cat. All applicants were females. According to the explanations given by scientists, it was because they have a more docile nature than that of males. That's why scientists are scientists. They know better. Nevertheless, after the first stages of selection, some of the animals were excluded from the program, precisely because of their bad temperament. These cats did not like to sit in an enclosed space for hours, listening to the roar of rocket engines and riding a centrifuge. Strange. Can't imagine why. A cute story about astronaut cats may not seem all that fun, especially considering that they had electrodes implanted in their brains. How else could scientists track the processes taking place there, let alone find out what was going to happen to the animal during the flight? Six candidates made it to the end of the study. These were the calmest. 
but only one cat maintained her weight throughout the program. The rest gained weight, and that was a bad sign. So C-341 was chosen to fly into space. The thing is, these cats were not given names so that they would not get used to them, or rather so that researchers would not become attached to the animals. Such is human nature. When one of the cats failed the electrode, she could no longer participate in the program. She was immediately given the nickname Scooby-Doo and made the mascot of the laboratory. As a result, one of the employees took the animal home. The still unnamed black and white cat successfully launched into space on October 18, 1963. The Veronique AG-1, the most advanced liquid rocket of that time, was launched from a site in Hamaguir, Algeria. The launch took place at exactly 8.09 a.m. So what if two years earlier, the U.S. and the USSR had already sent people into space? This event seems even less pompous because of the flight itself. It lasted a mere 15 minutes. The rocket rose to a height of about 100 miles, then returned to Earth. The same Soviet Laika was launched into orbit around the Earth, but the cat would definitely not want to trade places with this competitor. Nobody intended to bring that dog back at all. This was not provided for in the design of the spacecraft. Scientists expected that the animal would live in orbit for about a week, providing them with the necessary data. But Laika died just seven hours after the launch. The story of animals in space is not always a fun one. The French cat had to endure a g-force of about 9.5 g. Only a fighter jet that rises vertically reaches such figures. The average person loses consciousness at 4 to 5 g. After spending several minutes in zero gravity, the capsule with the cat on board began its descent. Parachutes helped it land smoothly. The animal appeared to be alive and quite healthy. The French had themselves a real astronaut cat. She became a local star. The media couldn't use the cat's number, C-341. After all, how could this possibly be fitting for a national icon? Someone noticed her similarity with the famous cartoon character, Felix the Cat. So the animal was named Felicette. Felicette's portrait had since appeared on postcards and stamps. They even made a documentary about her. Just a week after the launch of the Veronique AG-1, a second cat from the same program was sent into space. But Felicette's rival never appeared. The rocket with the animal on board crashed. This did not really bring any more fame to the only existing cat astronaut. It didn't really do anything good at all. The researchers processed all the data obtained thanks to the electrodes implanted in the brain, yet they still wanted more information. Therefore, two months after the star journey, Felicette was euthanized. This way, scientists were able to study the effect of space flight on a cat's brain in more detail. This was the reality of the animal astronaut. And perhaps no less sad is what occurred following the death of Felicette. In a word, the story came to an end. Even in France, the first astronaut cat ever was quickly forgotten. Granted, before this, a myth about Felicette did appear in the media. It was rumored that, in fact, a completely different cat was being prepared for a trip into space. But the animal had escaped from the laboratory just before the flight, and his name was Felix. So Felicette was just a fallback. These rumors were also fueled by the fact that on one of the stamps depicting an astronaut cat, it was named Felix. Although this would be a strange nickname for the cat, given that only females were trained in the program. Yet another argument to further debunk this myth was voiced by Dr. Gérard Chatelier. He reported that no Felix ever existed. Why is this an argument? Because Chatelier was working on the Cat Space Program. This wasn't the only mention of Felix's name in the astronaut cat conversation. At the end of 1958, some American newspapers wrote about the Brazilian space program. In particular, the Dayton Morning Journal and the Spokane Daily Chronicle wrote about the launch of a rocket with a cat on board. As it just so happened, the device was named Felix-1. The plan was set as such. The Army Technical School was building a rocket. It contained a sealed chamber with a cat inside and recording devices. The animal would be provided with oxygen for the duration of the flight. Having reached a height of about 70 miles, the apparatus with the cat would subsequently descend back down on parachutes. The mission would be carried out by an astronaut cat named Flamengo on January 1st, 1959. Cat lovers protested this. After that, there were no more press reports about the planned flight. 
It turned out that the flight did not take place. The rocket was dismantled and the project was shut down. So Felicet was the only cat to have been in space. And it was almost forgotten. That is until a London resident, Matthew Serge Guy, brought the animal back to everyone's mind in 2017. On the Kickstarter website, he launched a fundraiser for the creation of a statue of Felicet. There, they raised $57,000 for her. Now cast in bronze, the cat sits on the globe, looking at the stars. In 2020, the statue was installed at the International Space University in Strasbourg, France. So the story of the only cat that has ever been in space came back to life again. And this time, it didn't fade away. The Université Toulouse 3 is also building a new observatory. Its logo will be an astronaut cat, and the observatory itself will be named Felicette. It's quite possible that the French cat will remain the only one of its kind that has ever been outside the Earth. The days when animals were sent into space for research are now long gone. The ashes of pets in this case do not count, and astronauts on the ISS are unlikely to be allowed to take pets with them to the station. But it's quite possible that cats will still get a chance to go to space again, this time without the terrible G-force and in complete safety instead. The idea of space tourism is becoming increasingly popular all around the world. Although these are only ambitious projects as of now, they are no longer science fiction either. First, people will go into space on tours, and then the company will eventually get multiple requests for flying with pets. And then cats will go again into space. <laughs>